Otumba Benga Daniel's defect to the APC. What is the rationale behind politicians cross-tapping to another political party? And why do they play politics with these defections? And is the River State APC crisis finally over as Governor Meiji's faction celebrates victory at the Supreme Court's ruling? This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Ann. Cross-capiting is a new phenomenon in party politics because, as they say, politics does not to entertain permanent enemies but permanent interest. Now, in Nigerian politics, defection seems to be the new norm. The latest high-profile defection is former governor of Ogun State, Otumba Benga Daniels, dumping the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the All Progressive Congress, APC. Mr. Daniels said the decision to join the APC was well considered and thought out. Well, joining us today to have this conversation is public affairs analyst Ambrose Igboke and head of operations at the Extra Step Initiative, Eugene Abels. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, let's start. Uh, I'll start with you, um, Eugene. Is there really true democracy in Nigeria when we talk about? the issue of democracy, um, with the rampant, you know, crisscrossing from APC to PDP and back to APC, we've seen that happen in the past five to six years. Um, really, can we really say that there is true democracy with all of this? And what do people, these politicians stand for? Well, the, the two issues here, yeah. when do we truly have a democracy? And if we're playing by the rules, number two, what do, the, what do the politicians represent? Now, by virtue of the, the rule book is the constitution. And by virtue of the constitution, what we're playing is, is the kind of democracy we have chosen, which is enshrined in our laws. What they represent, it's about interest, whether it be group interest or individual interest. But for the, for the generality of the populace like us, we don't seem to get it that the law is very clear on this, that the only way you can play in that domain called politics, that it must be through a political party. They are about their business now, registrations and reaffirmations of membership and so on. We're looking at them. We think it's a joke. People are moving from one point to the other. And two, we seem to attach a lot of sentiments to politics. Politics is about power. Politics is about the allocation of resources. We have forgot, we don't want to believe and agree that politics is a full-time vocation for people in Nigeria and even in other climes, like what we've seen in America. For instance, look at the behavior of members of the great old party consigning the active in a clear, in a clear case of where a president had severely violated the morals which they stand for. But because of their political interest, they're doing that which, which they think will give grant them political survival. In Nigeria, we're practicing democracy according to how we've chosen it, meaning that the political parties are the vehicles for expressions of your objectives or desires or aspirations. As for how, they, how we see them, that is entirely left to us. But for them, it's about propagating their interest. The first of all, like when you when you're flying an aircraft, they say wear your mask before you wear your baby. It's about self-interest first in the Nigerian perspective before any. We used to think it was just a Nigerian thing, but we've seen what has happened in America with Republicans. So we're, this is a democracy, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Um, Ambrose, let's talk about um, the politicians themselves. What's the rationale behind this movement that they keep making? I mean, it's not once, it's not twice. They keep going back and forth. And one would wonder, haven't they found what they're looking for? Is it just um, 
a, like um, like Eugene just said, is it just about the power, about where the monies are? So if party A is in power, that's where the money is. So everybody just rushes to that party. And when they lose power, they move back to the other party. Can you really put a finger on what the rationale is? Well, first of all, uh, politics in Nigeria is about the individual. The political parties who are formed based on the aggregated interests of the people who form them. Most of the time, the political parties start as political movements and associations of like minds who have the same interests. And then it gravitates the political party and it's registered by IMEC. All the political parties in Nigeria only have one goal, to grab power and control power from whatever level they want, so the local government, the state, uh, the National Assembly, State House of Assembly, or even the presidency. Now, most of the political actors are state people who are known to each other. From the, they, are, you know, they have come a long way from the time of the uh, you know, First Republic, Second Republic, Third Republic. And now a, a new group of people came after June 12th. Mm -hmm. Those who opposed the annulment of June 12th and actually became activists and fought the junta mm -hmm. that annulled that June 12th and the preceding one. So we, we, after that, uh, what happened in 1999, 98, 99, that led to the 99 transition, we had a lot of political movement, realignment, and the rest. Mm -hmm. And they are the same people. So there is not based on, on uh, uh, differentiating ideology. There are no differentiating ideology. I mean, you just, Hence, you, you, just asked, you just asked my next question because I was going to ask, what is the foundation of the politics in Nigeria, the politics that we play, I mean, there has to be some representation of accountability, party ideology, standing for something. But, but, but we really don't see those things in our different political parties. And maybe that's what's responsible for the crisscrossing. Because, I mean, in the US, you have the Republicans, I, you have the Democrats. In the UK, you have the Tories, you have the Labour, you have the Lib Dems. You have the UK, but in Nigeria, you just have names and the same faces with different logos. What, what, what is happening is that you are putting UK, US, and these are long traditions of uh, established government over the years. We are talking about 300 years, 400 years, 200 years. In Nigeria, you don't have that. I mean, the present political experiment I mean, just started like 21 years ago. So, well, I mean, we are, we are still having our system problems. So they are well established over the Europe and the rest. We democracies have gone like 300 years and, and above. So those things are entrenched. Then one of the problems we have in Nigeria is also that you are forcing politicians that they must belong to a political party and that before you can contest some certain positions, you must have some certain political spread. For example, to contest for the presidency, you must have at least a party office in the, all the state capitals. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the things that make it so difficult. For me to contest a councillorship in my, in my ward or a house of assembly slot, I cannot run as an independent candidate. So oh, the matter the ideology you have, mm -hmm. you must merge your ideology with what the particular uh, political party says. Because the constitution has not given you the leverage to exercise your ideology. Okay. So therefore, we are in the same cycle. So whatever my personal ideology is, I have to look for a political platform to assuage it. So when I go to a particular platform and I don't like what they're doing, it's the same ideology I still have. I will go to another one. 
That is how I keep going. And sometimes when there's a quarrel or discontent mm -hmm. in a particular party, we are what we saw in the last period during the 2014 uh, issue, yeah. where the NPDP Emerged. came up. Mm -hmm. they, they went to form a power block in the APC. And now some of them have returned to the uh, some of them have returned to uh, to the PDP. The PDP. So uh, uh, this is our own stage of okay. politics. All right, let me go back to Eugene. Eugene, um, there have been theories and statements by scholars and political analysts, you know, uh, saying that there's nothing really wrong with these defections, uh, and they're saying that there is a need for uh, some form of prerequisite um, for democratic consolidations. For, um, with serious emphasis on strong and credible opposition choices. Um, can that be really achieved again? Because what you all have described is that, well, we just have a pattern of doing things. It's not that there is any strong ideology that we can hold on to that would make us not want to move from party A to party B. You're saying that, I mean, it's, it's somewhat of, uh, it's liquid, what the situation that we have in Nigeria. So if we were to... Well, we're not really frowning at defections because, you know, scholars have said there's nothing wrong with it. But can we build those consolidations, you know, the, in a democracy that we have, what we call a democracy? Is that possible in today's climb? Is it something we can walk towards? Amber said that America has a 300-year-old, uh, you know, democracy, and we're still trying to find our food. Do you think that we can do that anytime soon so that those who are coming after can build on it? First of all, um, in the present constitution, no. To quote Ambrose, mm -hmm. parties are for self, for aggrandizing, no, for for achieving personal interest. Now, without find being disrespectful, why I say it is difficult for you to achieve the things you're asking if we can build them into strong, not strong institu uh, political institutions. It's not how long you've done things. I like to make this categorical statement. Without, I'm not demeaning what was done, nor am I being disrespectful. But in the present political context of Nigeria, that not too young campaign is a joke. Why I say this is simply this. Without the absence of internal party democracy, nothing can be achieved in this our democracy. It will remain the way it is. I'll put it simply this, like this. They've just announced, parties are now doing record, the traditional reconciliation, reaffirmation of membership. Tomorrow you see the fight. Go and ask them for the register. The registers they have do not, it does not tally. The register that faction A in River State APC has is different from what faction B has. It's different from what INEC has. When we have digital links that I can link you with your BVN, NIN, and so on, that your membership should even be in the public space. So if you're moving from part A to part B, we know if you vote electronically, I should be able to trace you as easily as possible. But the absence of clear internal party democracy, it's an aberration and it is destroying Nigeria. And if Nigeria does not do anything, to it, it will worsen. Let me explain it. Me and you decide to join a party to express our ideas, either ideological or for pursuit of personal uh, interest, whatever it is, but there's an interest. Mm -hmm. Then when it is time to elect even officers of the party, the man who has been paying the bills, because I'm not a financial member, like happens in other places, which they refuse, the man who is in office in government, who is funding the party, will now give us list for who to vote for, that we must do delegate election. Mm -hmm. If that thing is not removed from, if it is not banned, we are going to have terrible problems. But this now, is, when it but this is what to, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to cut in. This is so the, there's take, a situation in Kwara State right now where there are three big wigs in the party. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a Lai Mohammed, you have a Saraki who's a minister uh, of state for transport, and you have the governor. And there's a power tussle right now where the, all their loyalists have divided the party into factions. And you saw that video that was trending with people fighting yeah. over the registration. <laughs> Yes, I, I will come to that. Those fights will be there because if, if they were, because everybody is fighting to seize control of the party. But if they had to go door to door and knock on house to house, as it used to be, 
not then you will not have this fight because the energy you put them towards convincing members of the party to vote for it, there will be no factions. Now, two, now, but the dangerous part is this. When it comes to, you have gone to register, you get your voter's card. You are not too young to run, isn't it? Yeah, fine. So party A, B, C, D. Now, the, the owners of the party have given them list of who to vote for. So if they bring a lizard, these parties, that is what you must vote for because that is what the law says. That's the dangerous part. Yeah. That's the dangerous part. That's the foundation of our problem. That's why you can see everybody to do all you do to fight. Yeah. But if you knew that you had to go through doors, go knock people's doors, go to schools, go to meet people and try to convince them, you definitely have a manifesto. You have a program. You want to appeal to the sentiments of the people. But now you know you don't need all you need is higher power, seize the voters register, seize the funds, stop them of funds, use violence to support it, use government agencies to pursue it. Once you get the party ticket, every other body will find like then they will not form that that thing they call reconciliation committee. They will have the big Agbada and Kaftans when they gather. <laughs> but the foundation of Nigerian's democracy for it to change. We must enshrine it our law to ban delegate election of all forms. Okay. So even when they put the cameras in public and tell you that you know it was a transparent, they've been giving lists on who to vote for and allocations right. of the what. Yeah. All right, Ambrose, come. Let me bring you back in here. Do we need a new political order in Nigeria for things to work? I mean, um, Eugene is saying that. Um, there has to be some form of strong internal party politics. Where do you stand on this? A new political order, uh, maybe based on you know um, pluralism of values of the people who are in these political parties? Um, because I did ask a, a few minutes ago, what do we need to do to consolidate this democracy? Uh, we cannot be talking about the political parties in Nigeria without addressing the issue of party funding. A man cannot invest as much as 100 million, 1 billion, to billions of dollars in a political party. Are you saying that he doesn't have a say in who becomes candidate for the party? It will be a mere academic facility, an exercise of facility to do that kind of graduates assumption. So we have to look into party funding. Campaigns, political processes all over the world are very expensive, even in the US. So but what they have done over the years is to avoid a system where party members, where a uh, volunteer are charities and the people that fund the election. If we can transpose that down here, we will look at it like in the First Republic, during the days of, uh, even in the Second Republic, the days of NPN and EPN and the rest. We remember, I remember one Obama having party cards. Every month they went for party, they pay monthly stipend as members of a political party. Now, if you can resolve that system, where will the law say an individual cannot back a political party like that? That is only where you start having internal democracy. You cannot be talking about internal democracy where a man brings out huge sums of money to grow the activities of the political party and show that the party is running pay workers and all those things, and you are telling me about internal democracy. That is a joke. So, so if we can critically take a look at that, it will solve 50% of our problem. But who's we? I mean, the political parties in themselves. I, I remember um, in 2019, Serap had taken these political parties, the major ones especially, to court because they refused to make uh, public their um, party finances. And of course, uh, the Electoral Act does stipulate you know, a cap for spending um, for political parties. But then, of course, we know that these things are not, these rules are not followed. 
So really, when you say we, who's we? If the political parties are in themselves not ready to go uh, or follow the footsteps or follow the rules and regulations of the electoral acts, who's going to, is it us, the outsiders, the people who are not necessarily the members of those parties that would come and enforce all of those changes? Well, there's not the citizen engagement and all kinds of uh, activities. What are we saying? We are here talking about this and rest. How many of us will actually, you know, engender a process? All the CSO, civil society organizations, the number of mental organizations that are advocacy groups, we should make a paper presentation to the National Assembly, to the INEC, and see how do we, what do we put provisions in the electoral act that will ensure that these things are complied with. Who, the, the, the court judgment we are talking about, the court speech, who has appealed it? So we have instrumentalities of the law, legal processes, advocacy, lobbying, and all other instruments to ensure that whatever we make our electoral process better, we can do that. Now, if we sit down and wait for the politicians to do it, we, are not, we will not achieve any results. All right. Um, because the politician is there, focus. His main thing is to win an election. That is why he came out. Hmm. So if the processes and the platforms that are put in place for him to actualize his dream of winning an election is faulty, he will ride with that platform. So Again, the citizens and judgment are able to change the platform. Because you have a, a credible platform and a platform that works well, the politician will come and fit into and run with it. Interesting. Um, Eugene, you mentioned you made mention of you know internal party politics and how um, they themselves are unable to, you know, paint a picture of what they would want for uh, to see during the elections, like you said. Um, one person would sit down and write the names of people who he thinks should be um, on the list. Let's talk about that. Um, if we are not able to get these things right at the party level, why, if, why are we having so many high expectations when it comes to the electoral process in itself? Yes, INEC has its job cut out for it, but if our political parties are not put together, why are we as Nigerians hoping for... Uh, Free, fair, and credible election, election anytime soon. But you see, the, the Nigerian situation is very sad and sickening. Whenever we have a problem, we tend to shift it. Either we spiritualize it or we want to create an agency for it. Now, Ambrose has spoken about, he mentioned, he reiterated the issue about funding. Who pays the piper? He takes the tune. Now, are you aware that there are limits to how much you can use for each election? Of course. And we were here like five years ago, where the limit was less than, for presidential, the limit was about, not up to, about a billion, but we were here, one of the political parties declared that they had raised about four billion for that election. When was the last time that INEC published the financials of the political parties? Why is the membership of the political parties not on? websites of INEC. How come at political rallies you will see 50,000 people? Go and check the election results of all the governors. Most of them win the elections on total votes amount to maybe 1 million. We are those thousands, meaning that all the old women have the colors of all the political parties, so they move from one point to the other. But if you know your details are out there and that everybody knows you, if anybody can check you and know which party you belong to, you will, be, you will not do some of those things. All those will, know, will actually know the real membership strength of each party. If we link you to your name, your, your VIM, and so on. Then two, this issue of funding. If INEC does what it's supposed to do, they're supposed to ask you, how did you raise money to fund your elections? It's a big issue in America. It's a massive issue. Well, one of the things that afflicted the Clintons was money that supposedly came somewhere from China. It's a big issue. So if you, if INEC sits, does his job, INEC will, people, political parties and governors who fund political parties will be a bit more careful. But, so, he, but he also brings to question the level of independence that the INEC has over political parties, especially the ones that are in power. 
Because again, the question, the question is yeah, because the question also always is raised about who appoints the INEC boss, how powerful he is, where does his power stop, and of course, where does the judiciary come here to make sure that the, the power, law is the power, your power stops in the constitution. It's for you to do your job. If yes, we know there are political influences, but you can do your job. Let me give you a typical example. When today all of us we easily quote um, the, what's this, uh, data people, the National um, Bureau of Bureau Statistics. Bureau of Statistics, yes, the MBS. Do you know what it means for you to be the DG of Bureau of Statistics? I've been telling the present administration that unemployment figures are hitting the ceiling, that inflation rate is hitting 15%, 17%, and you can't call, they've refused to call it because they have decided to be credible. So if the National Population Commission decides to be responsible, let them continue. If you can't do the job, if you can't face it, get out of the kitchen. There is no moral justification. Let me give you a typical example. We were all living witnesses here. When I next said they were going to automate their system of voting. Meanwhile, they knew they had not taken care of the legislative part of it to ensure that they were enshrined their laws. And INEC went ahead to spend over 380 billion for computerization and other related matters, only for them later to all of this was thrown out. Today, we have not asked for those officers to be sanctioned. Where did you get the authorization to expend scarce public funds on things that were unconstitutional to your duties? Uh -huh. Yeah, we, 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 we're, jo we're a joker nation. So, uh, and, and, and the will not come and do this for us. We need to see. We say, and the, beauty, the annoying part of it is for people to think that we had not experienced better before now. We've seen, this is the fourth republic. We've seen like seven military administrations. What are they talking about? Hmm. Amber, finally, before we wrap things up, um, there have been calls for youngsters to float their own political parties, you know, because these people that we already know, we see, we've seen them since, you know, the beginning of democracy from 1999 and the, there are people who say that they've been recycled over and over again, and they're the same people who are going back and forth in you know, these political parties. But um, how does floating a new political party, let's not forget that, we, uh, during the 2015 uh, general elections, we saw an increase in the number of political parties, and there was a call also to reduce this number of political parties and make sure that these parties are relevant, um, at least have a certain form of relevance before they can actually be accredited as political parties. Uh, but then young people floating a political party, what, do, what, what change does that even bring? And again, what's the guarantee that there will not be an infiltration of these same people, uh, the, the, the big wigs, the guys who have been here for a long time? And, and what, what, who's to say that, you know, we will change anything? Well, uh, the, young, when you talk about young people coming into uh, part, uh, political party or party processes in Nigeria or politics in Nigeria, I want to make something clear. Political power is not gifted. Political power is not a gift to be distributed to people. You have to go for it. You have to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And you have to end it. So if the young stars there are sitting there and they are singing the mantra, oh, these people, the same people, the old people, they won't give space for the young. We are jokers. There is nothing wrong with the same people running the country. Mm -hmm. Israel, that's one of the best countries doing well today, have had almost the same set of people running the country since the 60s and 70s. Let me call it from the 70s, from the time of Shimon Perez, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, mm -hmm. and with direct, uh, a lot well, of Netanyahu them. Well, Netanyahu is still, yeah, Netanyahu is still there. They are not young people. They were not young, but they ran the country well. So the young people, if they want to, the, to be relevant in the political game plan, should get involved. How many of them attend their, their party world meeting? How many of them are even registered members of political parties? So our young people are we are not ready yet to grab political power. 
as the, the other ones that I enjoy the political power now, I'm not going to give it to them just as a, a, a gift. Uh, this, it's not a gift. Okay. So until the young people are ready to organize themselves, seek power, be disciplined, because most of our young people are not even disciplined, they follow the process. It means a lot of consensus building, it means a lot of mobilization, okay. it means a lot of persuasion. Okay. Our young people don't even have that tact to well, engage in this thing. Well, we're out of time. And that so is why it has been needed there for a long time. Well, we're out of time. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for this very interesting conversation uh, that should be have, had more often. Thank you very much. Eugene Abels is the head of operations for Extra Step Initiative, and Ambrose Igboke is a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank All right. You. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the Rotimi Amechi faction of the All Progressive Congress APC celebrates the Supreme Court's decision to strike out an appeal filed by Igor Aguma in July of 2020. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>